Hi, my name is McCade Sorensen. And I'm George Meyer. And today we're presenting our AI generated water masks. It's a project that we worked on over the summer at the Alaska Satellite Facilities. And these are slides from our recent presentation at the AGU conference 2019. So the motivation of this project is making accurate water masks is a time intensive and difficult process. Making water masks are needed for a variety of GIS applications, which include change detection, splitting maps into layers, making interferograms, defining coastlines, and of particular importance at ASF, INSAR and RTC data processing. So given the, uh, the context, we decided our goal would be generating water masks automatically. We provided a dual band uh, SAR, which stands for Synthetic Aperture Radar Images, from Sentinel 1A and 1B. A wa water mask being an image containing the pixels instead of water. The reason we decided to use SAR images is because they are, non, they are non optical. This means that one doesn't have to worry about the time of day, so whether it's uh, night or day, or if there's clouds in the sky, we can still get those images. Um, also, ASF being a SAR DAC, we have a lot of access to the data. And right here, it kind of gives the rundown of what we decided to go with. And so we went with a fully conventional neural network using semantic cementation and the unit architecture. So currently, uh, we're testing an input of 64 by 64 by 2, and an output. And with that input, we get the output of 64 by 64 by 1. And if you look over to the right, you can actually see um, some of the results that the neural network has produced. So if we go back one, um, those are the images that were put in as input and this is the output from those images. So programming AI can be thought of as two parts, defining the topology, which McKay just covered, and generating the training data, which was my focus. AI is essentially a pattern recognizer, which learns to correlate the inputs to the outputs. In our case, the inputs would be the dual band SAR images, and the outputs would be the water masks. And essentially, when we started this project, we didn't have an abundant source of accurate water masks, so we needed to create our own. So let me show you what that process looks like. Hi, this is George Meyer speaking, and I'm going to be demonstrating how data sets are made. We start out by going to the ASF data search page, Vertex, and we find a an area of interest. For example, this is a granule over Prune, India. We press this button to copy the scene name. Then we can go to ASF's hype to RTC correct that data. And once that data is RTC corrected, we can download that. We can download the Python script for that granule which is saved to downloads. Then we can go over to our terminal where the our AI water project is located and by running this command python3 scripts make data.py mkdata ai test 7 which is our neural network file named demo and 512 is the a tile size. We begin by downloading the data from ASF and this can take a few minutes. At this point the data has been downloaded and the program starts by opening the VV and VH SAR images as seen here as well as a statistical method to approximate the water mask. If we zoom in on these hot spots, we can then select the various pixels and by pressing mask will make an approximation for us. And as seen here, this is a poor quality mask, so we can do this in an iterative fashion until we have a acceptable mask.
As you can see, this mask is a much better fit. You can see various water bodies as well as the coastline. So we press save GeoTIFF and then close. Now the program will be opening a GUI which allows us to edit the granules. So this will take a few minutes. Okay, here the GUI is opened and as you can see these are all null values which means they're essentially garbage. We can press the delete button to get rid of them. Once we have a actual mask to look at, you can see we have the v VV and VH. And as we scroll over this, the pixel values are displayed in the bottom right corner. And we have a mask which was generated via the statistical methods, as well as a prediction which was generated from a previous iteration of the neural network. The reason we have that is because sometimes the prediction outperforms the mask and vice versa, and it allows us the optimal starting point to edit the mask. Keep will keep the mask, replace will keep, keep the prediction, edit mask, edit prediction, allow you to edit these, and in cases where you're not sure what you're looking at, SAR images can be difficult to interpret, we can press copy. Opening QGIS, we can come up here, search for our, our mask, zoom in, and this is a Esri satellite map, which is we're not exactly sure the date range. However, it is good for general debugging, especially for large bodies of water that aren't likely to change day to day. Changing the opacity allows us to see how well our mask fit. And as you can see here, it fits very well except for some pixels right here. Most likely these pixels are flipped because of wind moving the surface tension of the water. So if we want to edit those, we can edit the mask, select the pixels that we want to change, and by pressing 1, we'll flip those pixels to 1. And once we're satisfied, we can hit WQ to save. This process will be done over and over again until the entire granule is complete or until we have enough data to train the neural network. Hi there, this is McKate again. I'm here to show you basically some of the results that we've achieved with the fully convolutional neural network. And currently we are in QGIS. I have OpenStreetMaps open with the SAR image laid on top with a little bit of transparency so you can see through to the OpenStreetMap. Now, as we zoom in, you can kind of see where the water bodies are within this image. Um, any dark area tends to be the water, and any light, more so land. So we're going to throw on top of that the water mass that the neural network produced. That also has a little bit of transparency, so that way you can see through and you can see the land. And as we zoom in, you can see that the water mask is doing a very good job of getting those uh, coastlines. And we'll just kind of move around so that way some of the results can be seen. We'll go up there and then we'll check in this area. As you can see, overall the neural network is doing a very good job um, finding the water within SAR images. So right here we have some GIFs that kind of show the evolution of the neural network as it goes on. It starts at Epoch 2, then we go to Epoch 4 and there's not much of a change. Epoch 8, you start to see some, 16 a little bit more, 
By 32, some kind of drop off, and 64, those come back with better results. And we think that drop off happens because of the spikes of the neural network um, going up and down as it's training. And as you can see right here, you can see those happening as the epochs go forward. So basically, is what happens: it drops, kind of lose that, picks picks up on a new detail that isn't as abundant within the image, and then goes right back up and gets even more of the image. And right here, we actually have a water mask of Alaska. So right here, we were able to take a, a subscription from um, ASF height and run the neural network to produce a massive water mask. And as you can zoom in a little bit, you can see some of the details of the neural network and how well it can do in certain categories. Other areas like glaciers, we're still currently working on to try to make it even more accurate. That way, it's not giving us false uh, positives and more so in the north slope too where uh, we are having a little trouble but we currently are making data sets to combat that issue. We're hoping to implement this into hype soon so stay tuned.